Hey, hello, Fabio. Can you hear me? Hello, Marcus. How are you, dear? How are you doing? Very good. It's good to see you. You too. You completely changed your look since I last saw you. What? What's yeah, I was casting you? for Narcos, you know. <laughs> 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 so that yeah, I was trying to get into the character. <laughs> they needed uh, a, a drug lord, and I was thinking about you know I could be I could possibly be the perfect casting. <laughs> and I recognize where you are. You're in your uh, house in Milan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in Milan. Yeah. So I'm and, in Milano today. And you have a guitar, so why don't you play something for us? But as long as it doesn't have a copyright, you don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> I will uh, I will play it when when we speak. Sorry, I think it's good as as, um, as a background music, you know. And I will I want to work on soundtracks. <laughs> so tell us how have the last few months been for you in Milan? Um, you know, Milano in, in the last months has been quite strange, but like all over the world in some ways, you know. I mean, it's like we have been locked down in our houses for more than three months. I mean, never happened on the surface of this planet. More than half of the population has been in these conditions. It's, it's been a very interesting time. I mean, apart from all the disaster and people that died, and we're very sorry for that, but, but it gave us a chance for a possible renaissance in some ways. We had to completely reset and rethink about the way we, we love people, the people that surround us. I mean, what's really important, what, what really matters. And, and coming to design, also to, in some ways, to mirror ourselves in the places where we live. For example, I realized that really this house perfectly represents me. I live very well inside this place. But because I really mm, built it as, as a mirror, as something that really would represent myself. But, um, this is not very common, I would say, because lots of people that I was talking to, they were saying, oh my God, I feel uh, imprisoned in this place. You know, I, I can't breathe. You know, and that's something very interesting because um, houses have always been very much representing, you know, the, 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 the landlord, the people that lives in it. But now more and more we use them like hotel rooms or, you know what I mean? It's like, for me, it, it's a very good way, it's a very good chance to rethink about our relationship with the, our own private places. Also, you know, uh, let's talk about the smart working thing, you know, I mean, we have to probably transform our home into our office as well. So it has to be also interpreted on different points of view. I mean, I, it really gave us a lot to, to think about a lot to work about, you know, in the, in the close future, in the near future. And basically, you know, I, I was this morning with, with um, some friends and we were saying the problem with the Italians is that we consider public space as no man's land. You know, this, this is quite interesting, you know? I mean, we have, um, we, we have a lot of affection for our own private places but we cannot relate to public space because public space is of everybody and we don't have an idea of community. So that I would say that if we really want a real renaissance, we should start from house, we should start from our home, but then adapt the concept to the surrounding. It's like a stone in, a, in the water, you know, like circles that get bigger and bigger and are more and more inclusive. You know, I really would say that if we want to change things, we should go in the streets. I mean, when I was, I've been living two years in New York, you know, I was looking at the, at the homeless in the streets sitting on sofas, and I was thinking, oh my God, these people, they really own the city. They're sitting comfortably on a sofa, watching the environment. I mean, they really own the city. You know, we, we feel like the public space doesn't belong to us. It does. We should go back in the streets, trying to have a sense of uh, adopting places, you know? So even if there is some garbage on, on, the, on the ground, I should grab it and, and throw it in a garbage can, you know? I mean, it's like, that's, it's like adopting the same uh, behavior as I do in my home house. You know, that's, that's a very important concept, especially for people like us. I mean, we work with, the, with space, we work with public space, with private space. We should think about the basis of what we do. I mean, that, that's really something that um, uh, affects me a lot. 
So we're here to talk about the work you've done with Lensdale. How do you how do you know Hans? When did you first meet? Do you, do you remember the time we went together to see Hans, by the way, in Ventura Labrate? Um, I, you took me on your scooter when they had the big blue gun. <laughs> Hans, you can help me. How oh, many years ago? Because he invited me to one of to a conference that he was hosting. And how many years ago was it? Something like more than 20, right? Hans, how many years? It, oh, it, 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 it was 2000. 2000, yes. 20 yes. years ago, 20 years ago, exactly. And you know, I mean, uh, I received this invitation from, uh, from Hans Lensfeld that already at the time was, you know, a very important businessman in the field. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was, you know, I was excited and I was uh, proud of this invitation. And I went there and, uh, you know, beside the businessman, I met the band and, uh, and we are best friends, Marcus. We really are best friends. I mean, I love Hans. He's one of the most generous person I've ever met. And uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm friends with his family. I mean, I, I love this man. So that working with him has been just um, the evolution of a relationship. I mean, it's like, it's not being like, it gives me a brief and I develop a brief. Actually, nothing in my life is that way. Everything gets very personal. I always like to be involved very personally. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not cold. <laughs> it's really this way. <laughs> For me, it's really hard to, to keep distance with things and with people. And so um, everything has been a, a beautiful evolution, you know, his personal history. I remember I introduced him to Marcel and, uh, and, and together with Marcel, he made the Moy that we know. Because um, more in the very beginning was a completely different thing, and um, and, and lots of things. I mean, really, I've, I've seen his kids from this height to <laughs> to taller than me. You know what I mean? It's like it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It, it's family. Let's put it this way: it's family. And as an Italian, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, Hans, what's your version of the story? Maybe now, maybe now is the time to show the the slideshow. Yes, your, yes, 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 yes. Uh, this I will put, oh wait, it's this. So this actually, but now you cannot see it, I guess. Uh oh, can you see this? Not yet. Not yet, oh my God, because then I, the disabled person, okay, maybe, maybe like this. Yeah, starting to work now. Okay, then I should do like this, okay. So this is the gallery here in Amsterdam. And this gallery is now dedicated to a few artists. One of the artists is Marcel Wanders. Now, excuse me, uh, is uh, Joop van Liesheid on the left-hand side. This is a dick, an enormous dick. I once uh, put it uh, in front of my desk because I was interrupted 10 times in a day with silly questions. And then I thought, okay, let's put this thing on the other side of my desk so that when people want to speak with me, they have to climb over this desk and then they see themselves in the mirror behind me next to next to the, I don't know, so the top of this deck. Um, that's one piece. The other piece, piece you see is a piece designed by Fabio. And as we are friends for more than 20 years, finally we succeeded into having a product together. And that makes, makes me really very, very happy. Then uh, this is a picture made in November 2000. As Fabio just said, Fabio did a, a lecture for me for something like 2000 people. And uh, the day after, Fabio stayed and he said, Hans, you know, I'm working for Capolini. Marcel Wanders is also working for Capolini. It, it, I would like to meet him. And in those days, uh, there was, uh, there was uh, not all the technical things you have now. So I called uh, an agency for the telephone number of the studio. I called the studio. There was a lady. And I said, can I have lunch tomorrow with Marcel and with Fabio? And she called back and she said, oh, that's fine. And we had this lunch in the Japanese restaurant Okura 
in Amsterdam. And, and this is one of the pictures, fortunately, I made because this was an enormous step in my career. I know Marcel Wendels through Fabio Novembre. Uh, and since that moment, Fabio, we always stayed friends. When I visited you, we sat together, we had dinners, and when you came in Amsterdam, we drove around, um, we organized dinners. This is one of the dinners here in Amsterdam. And uh, about the friendship of, 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 of Fabio, in 2018, I married. I decided that it was time to marry with Swan. And for me, it was clear that only one person, so as he said, only Italians know something about family, that I decided to ask Fabio as my best man. Best and, man! <laughs> and this is when I saw on the channels in Amsterdam, Fabio that morning, and you know, you can see how extremely happy that we are. But Fabio also brought an incredible uh, uh, present. And you can see all those scarves and you can see the channels packed, packed with people. So we arrived with the boat back from the city hall. And then in front of the bridges, there were lots of people with this colored scarves. And normally that are the colors of Ajax the football team from Amsterdam. So I thought that are the people, that are the hooligans of Ajax. But then later, when we spoke them, I found out that it were the people visiting, visiting my, uh, my marriage. So that was totally, totally great. Yes. Okay, that about Fabio and me. Now about the cooperation. So, as I told, when I was in Milan, I visit always Fabio. I always sleep in his guest house. And uh, in this period, uh, unfortunately, ah, it was in December 2014, Fabio had to go outside the country for a lecture. And I had dinner and fun with all his crew. And uh, they said, Hans, can you do a presentation for us? What actually Lensfeld is doing for us? And uh, that's what I did. And uh, I showed all the workers, all the designers we worked with. But the final thing, the final slide, where the fuck is Fabio Novembre? It was my intention to work for 20 years with Fabio and I was never able. And with those people, I expressed this, this, this wish and uh, this is only in December, and uh, Fabio came back, and he said, Hans, actually, it's a great idea. <laughs> That's what I like as well. And uh, so it all started, and only a few months later, it is in uh, April, we presented this so far called New Balance. Of course, things are changing. Lives are changing. Private labor is changing. Careers are changing. We have COVID. We have Black Lives Matter, everything is changing, and this so far is a symbol of it. Uh, this without people, this so far here with the master himself on it, those pictures are made in Milan in the Venture Centrale, and here a fun photo, as most of the photos are, with us all together. We showed this so far, also in Eindhoven during the Dutch Design Week, uh, Jon Junte, who you see on the left hand side, he is a uh, respected Dutch journalist writing about architecture and design. I have a range of interviews with Jeroen. Jeroen, uh, so we always invite two uh, designers, and uh, one of the designers gets the nasty questions, and the other designer gets the nice questions. For him, it's a certain kind of platform. And uh, so here we have uh, Fabio 
And the other person we divided is Lara Bowins. I really like Bara, uh, La Lara. What, what she is making is very uh, special and really of this moment in time. Um, it's always in the right proportions and that in combination with the right materials, the careless, how it with it is made, I really appreciate. So that's why we also invited uh, Lara for this for this for this interview. And this is how Fabio appeared. It's always uh, interesting. <laughs> Fabio includes always uh, a special gift, the guitar today. But here, this T-shirt. Who the fuck is Fabio Fabre? And Fabio, maybe you later can explain something about T-shirt because it has to do with the Rolling Stones. We cannot play songs of the Rolling Stones, but maybe we can we can do this. Okay, then here, the product what we developed together, Fabio, in all uh, different colors. Uh, as I said, it is called New Balance. Fabio, now things are changing and we all are getting more in balance. It is my ambition to develop a second generation of this and to call it not balance, but to call it in balance or just balance. I think uh, people, people like that as well. Um, then two more slides to go. I would like to go back to this slide where Fabio, the three of us, met for the first time. Marcel Wanders, Hans Lensfeld and Fabio Novembre. And now the, fi the final slide is more or less the site. This is a few weeks ago, ah, the end of last week. And here we see again us in the same uh, order. Marcel, me, and for me, it's so fantastic that 20 years of our life has passed and that we are still such good friends. That's for me so watchful. And that's it. <laughs> Marcus, yeah. Thanks, Anne. Do you want to unshare the screen? Oh, I have to unshare the screen. Even look like this. I'm getting very professional in this all. I think, Fabio, unfortunately, the, the Zoom has cut out your music, so we need to go to you now and hear a bit of your guitar playing because it was interesting. <laughs> Island. I'm very intimate as a music. It's like wow. yeah, for me. For me, ah, my daughter is coming. Ah, amore, va va in contraverde che sta arrivando. Sta arrivando si è giù con Emanuela. Sorry guys, this is life. You see, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is the, the good thing of the of the diretta, you know, live, going live. It's also this, you know, life goes on. Anyway, I would like to to add something to what um, Hans was saying. I mean, um, you know, we, we always try to, especially in our sitting room, okay, in our living room. And it's interesting that in uh, some people call it sitting room, some people call it living room. I like living room, of course. Because it's the room where you live with your family. It's like you get cozy, you get comfortable. And, um, and what do you want in this kind of room? You want stability. You want a balance. But stability and, uh, and humans, they don't really integrate as concepts. I mean, it's because our life has got nothing stable. <laughs> you know, and it's like, I mean, I realized that in my life, I had so many... Uh, earthquakes, you know, centimeter earthquakes and uh, any kind of things. I mean, I, I lost my parents. I mean, we all go through this kind of earthquakes. So our idea of stability, it's always different. You know, I mean, it's like our time is completely, it's full of, of, our, of uh, uncertainties. And, um, and the only way is to evolve, is to find new um, um, Particles of balance. Actually, that's the correct word. Particles of balance. You know, in all this chaos, it's like, you know, Mandelbrot and all the theories about chaos, he, he tried to give laws to chaos. He tried to rule chaos. 
But this idea of our sofas is, is like finding new balances in, in the complete disorder of our lives. You know, so, so even if you lose the legs, even if you lose an armchair, uh, uh, whatever, you, you just find a new balance, a new way of, uh, of resisting, of evolving. You know, for me, like everything I design, it's, it's a theoretical manifesto in some ways. It's never just a, a sofa, I mean, because what, what can you work about? I mean, you can just work on, on its comfort. I mean, there's people, actually, you know that uh, in some companies, there, there are people that only test the comfort of sofas so that you cannot do it as a designer. You know, for me, design has always been like, you write a message, you put it in the bottle, you throw it out in the, in the sea of, uh, of uh, objects. And, and that's what it happens also with this sofa. You know, it's like, and, mm, we would extinct if we cannot throw more messages that make more sense to us. We, we can die if we, don't, if we don't find a new balance in order to survive. And that's what these sofas try to talk about. You know, they, they talk about our lives, our imperfect lives. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Fabio, we were talking before with Martin Barson and, and Hans about Milan and, and what will happen in the future there with the, the fair and everything. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Is Milan getting, it's getting back together? Is, are things going to be like they were before or will it be different in future, do you think? Marcus, let's put it this way. I've never been um, a hooligan in anything, you know? I'm a supporter. I'm a, um, uh, I, I, I like to, to watch good sport, but never been a hooligan. It means that I've never uh, married a cause that by, you know, like um, for granted, let's put it this way. So even if I live in Milano, even if I'm Italian, I think that things will evolve all the time. So even if Milano will not be the same, even if Milano will change and what else, we just have to believe in evolution. You're not uh, putting the, the, the UK flag on your shirt and Hans is not doing it with the, with the Dutch flag and I'm not doing it with the Italian flag. We should just use one single flag, the world flag. And the world, you know, has always different balances as well. So that until now, Milan has been the epicenter of all the design culture and stuff. If we will be able to keep it good, otherwise it just will change. You know what I mean? It's like, and, and we cannot uh, replicate something that cannot be replicated. I mean, it's like now everything will change. The perception of people will change. We will be a little afraid of, of being close to each other. I mean, it's like, we'll see, we'll see, but we can only look forward. You know, I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not connected to, to, to the past. I mean, it's like, we, we have to evolve, Marcus. So we'll see, Milano, if, it, if everything will get organized and rethought in a good way, Milano will keep on being such a place. Otherwise, we will change it, whatever. You know, really, let's accept life the way it is. And, you know, for us, actually, I always think about what can I do? I can only put quality, Marcus. You know, I'm 53 years old. And you know, when you're 53, you start thinking, you know, there are friends like, common friends, Thomas Sedwick, BRK Ingels, they are 10, five years younger than me. They build these skyscrapers, areas in the world, they're changing cities, and they're just doing little things. But, you know, you keep on going because you realize that if you put quality even on, on little things, it doesn't matter if you do a space or a city. It's the intensity that makes the difference. It's the, it's the quality of your work that makes the difference. And your work is made every day. So that let's just put our best in everything we do. That will change things. So that I will try to make beautiful things for next year. I will try to send a lot of messages in the battle, in, in the ocean of, uh, of the market. 
But still, that, that's what I can do. And that's what we all can do. You know, if we raise the quality individually, it will raise publicly. You know, I, responsibility is a huge burden. And you cannot always have Gandhi in order to put it on his shoulder. You know, I always think that we have a little backpack of responsibilities that we all should put on our own shoulders so that I accept to bring my backpack of responsibilities, but we all should. It would be a definitely a better word, you know? Let's just try to do it, you know? And, and doing provisions of what it can be. I don't know, but if we all go in a good direction, it just can just be better. And Hans, why did it take you so long to do a project with Fabio then? You said you knew him for 20 years. What was, the, what was holding you back? I asked him, but, but not on a very direct way. You know, I said, do, <laughs> Fabio and I, we had so many dinners together and always that night that it, it, it came up, you know. Uh, but uh, sometimes Fabio was too busy or Fabio was dead or... Fabio maybe did not understand <laughs> the backing. Uh, uh, it, 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 it never happens. Or maybe we, we agreed and we forgot, you know. So, uh, but it always it was for me the intention to do once a project with Fabio. And then when I was doing this presentation for his crew, when he was not there, it was for me the opportunity to get his staff know that I wanted this product and that they had to, not to convince, but that they had to organize it actually, you know? Yeah. So when you launched, when you started on this collaboration with Fabio or with any designer, in fact, is it a, is it a, there's no business case, it sounds like. It sounds like it's an adventure that you go on with someone you consider your friend. And do you even project the volumes or the turnover? No, the volumes never, <laughs> because, you know, I developed products of whom I thought I would sell millions and I did not sell 10. And uh, on the other hand, I have developed products of whom I thought that they never would be very successful and they came very successful. Uh, for instance, the chair, the office chair of... Um, Atelier Valise out, we developed it and I thought, uh, actually I just did it to help, to help, to help Joop, you know, but then other people came who wanted and so it really became a very successful product. Yes, so, so it's all, so we, that, that we area we never, we never enter, you know, but of course I know it, 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 it has to be stable, it has to be innovative, right? it has to be authentic. It has to have this twist. This all has to be there. And then we can start working on it, you know? Yeah. And it's nice that you're using these conversations to talk to your designers about what you're going to do next. So you said to Fabio that he might be another version of... I hoped he would say yes. But I, <laughs> I did not have an answer yet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do anything we do. Excuse me? And I would do anything with you. Okay, okay. It's not really wrong. But yeah. it's interesting what you were talking about. How can you predict a success? I mean, our work is not a uh, fortune teller, you know, it's not uh, science, it's not, uh, you cannot predict. You just try to do your best, you know? I mean, it's like, just try to do something that makes sense to you, that yeah. if you think that will help people you know, improving their life or, or at least make them think yeah. about something else, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that, but, but it's interesting because entrepreneur, this, this kind of entrepreneur, more and more have no space in the field. Yeah. I mean, dreamers like Giulio Cappellini are like a, a lost race in some ways. I mean, it's like today is all about numbers. Can yes. you survive yeah. in such a difficult market? Yeah. I mean, on, on the way, I totally get it, you know? I mean, I think Ikea, Ikea is doing a, a fantastic job on this point of view. Uh, but at the same time, you need a pioneering approach. And uh, the best man to testify this kind of approach is Hans Lansfeld. I mean, Hans has always been a pioneer. I mean, he's always been yeah. investing in design, arts. Uh, I mean, everything that was interesting to him 
has, has been focused by him and, uh, and he is working on it intensely. I mean, it's like, he can be really a, a new kind of entrepreneur for our field. You know, I, I think that there's been like um, historical people like Pier Ambrogio Busnelli, Osvaldo Zanotti. I mean, we have had pioneers, but in the old days, Today we can have answer answers. I really think the approach he's having can be revolutionary. I mean, he's involving very high profile people with very different backgrounds. And of course it's not enough because a lot of other companies try to do it. But what he really creates is this family feeling. I mean, today he put online Martin Bass. You found this out, me for less. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worth nothing, but, but I mean, I, <laughs> no, I, we are here honoring him. Yeah. You know, it, we will never do a commercial thing for the sake of, of doing a commercial, you know, we are, we are honoring a brother. And, and that makes a difference. I think that arrives to the, to, to the people. That arrives to someone that wants eventually to change his sofas and say, hey, you know, I, it's, it's a matter of really a philosophy behind. And, and answers all his ends. Really, he loves beautiful things, he loves uh, beautiful food. I mean, we, we have to, to search for quality and he's been searching for quality all his life. You know, that, that, that's what I really uh, learned by Hans, that, you know, there's, there's never a limit. He always gone beyond. You know, that when he was young, he was collecting Ferraris. <laughs> Not, you, know, you know, the audience should know. He was collecting Ferraris. He, he's always been a lover of beauty and, and speed as well, because he's always been so fast. Actually, probably, you know why? Probably we've been working in the last 20 years together, because he's always been so fast. He's been doing so many things. I'm a bit slower on this point of view. <laughs> so now he completely established, he says, Fabio, I want to make Lansfeld the most important furniture label in the world. And I say, okay, I believe it. We'll work together. You know what I mean? It's like he's focusing on this thing now. He's not keeping 10 things open. He's focusing on one thing. So that I'm sure it's going to be successful. Well, I think that's a great point to end on, Fabio. It was almost like your wedding speech. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have one final word? Of course, yeah. Fabio, thank you so much. <laughs> I have a mission, and I had a mission, but my mission is even more stronger now. Thank you so much for this. You are a true friend. You are a brother, as you know. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you so much, guys. And it's been really fun speaking to all of you. And yes, and I hope you... soon again. Yeah, and thank you for Hans for um, connecting with me with so many of my friends today. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Let, let's put it this way. You know, Hans, you know that me and Marcus have been friends for almost 20 years. I know. You attended the team. Marcus, I've been supporting the zine from the very beginning. Yeah. I think he's been doing something amazing because yeah. he really for sure, made a for sure. in the field. He made a so yeah. that being on this platform for me is such an honor. You know, yeah. I'm honoring two friends that yeah. made incredible things. Yeah. Really. I'm, and thank you, Fabio. Thank you for your support as well, Fabio. You know it means a lot to me. In different okay. times. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Hans, so much for doing this with us. And um, yeah, let's do it again soon. Yeah, I love it. Maybe better in the real world, but if not, then we can do it like this. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you to your families, eh? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I love you all. <laughs>